Welcome. We're very excited to have you all here. Ever since we started Aptera, we've been dreaming of the day that we'd get to introduce our launch edition and a better way to travel the world. What we're going to do today. At Aptera, we're obsessed with efficiency. We see it as a future, as a way to transform the world into a more and creative and less destructive place. We see it as our uniting force. It's why we're all gathered here today, in fact and common vision to make the world a better place. It's one of the most noble missions that we can aspire to, but without a unique solution, without something that actually moves a needle, it can't be done. As engineers, we've been solving the equation for a better way to travel. And as you know, we found the answer, a solar electric vehicle with a drag coefficient as close to zero as possible a true zero emissions vehicle that gets up to 40 miles per day directly from the sun's rays. Many of you have been following us since the beginning and we're humbled by your continued support. Today, we're honored to announce our launch edition vehicle, the solar EV that we will start production with, the beginning of solar mobility for all. Now that's the final product. But how do we get into high volume production and how do we make solar mobility a reality for everybody? This is a new equation we've been solving for and continue to work towards every day. To help us ramp our production more quickly and as part of Aptera's ethos of simplicity and efficiency, our launch edition vehicles will have one unified configuration, just as you've seen. The production of our launch edition vehicle symbolizes a dawn of a new era. It's about introducing Aptera's unique and revolutionary capabilities to the world as quickly and as safely as we can, because we all know time is of the essence when it comes to saving the planet. It's also the foundation of our shift as a company towards manufacturing and production. It's about building the team and the processes that will ensure we get solar mobility to the masses. It's our desire as a movement to show the world the capabilities of Aptera. This launch edition is our chance to rewrite automotive history. Aptera's launch edition is not only the most efficient vehicle on the planet, but it's the first electric vehicle that requires no charging for most daily use. With our proprietary solar technology, 
roughly 700 watts of solar cells. Aptera can allow you to travel up to 40 miles per day directly from the sun. Now, Aptera has highly efficient two-axis curved solar cells integrated into the roof, the dash, a hood, and the hatch that are about 50% lighter than other alternatives. And they're reaching a functional reliability lifespan of over 10 years. This means that most people will be able to drive for months without ever having to plug in. In Southern California, or a location with high sun exposure, the average American driver would never have to plug in their Aptera for daily driving. In a location with medium sun exposure, like New York or Chicago, the average American driver would only have to plug in their Aptera about three times a year. That's with an average daily driving of about 29 miles. So in San Diego, you could expect 11,000 miles of free solar range per year, and approximately 9,000 miles in New York or Chicago. To reach these numbers, we've had to rethink traditional automotive shapes and materials. When we did that, we found we had to develop a lot of our own technology at Aptera. Aptera's unique aerodynamic body and three-wheel design provides the lowest drag coefficient of any other vehicle on the road at just 0.13. That means Aptera encounters the least amount of resistance possible while driving, and it allows you to use much less energy per mile. Additionally, the body structure is made of ultra lightweight but extremely strong recyclable carbon composite material, just like this right here. Aptera weighs 65% less than other electric vehicles today while still protecting you and your loved ones in a safety cell that's much stronger than steel per weight. With only six main parts, Aptera's body structure has an ultra low CO2 life cycle. And we'll discuss this more later on in the presentation. The Launch Edition Aptera will also have motors in each of its three wheels. We've co-developed in-wheel motors with the LaFay Propulsion Technologies because they are the most efficient solution available today. And it give us, gives us the lowest energy use per mile. The Launch Edition offers faster acceleration, vectorized torque control, and improved performance and stability because it's three-wheel drive. We're excited to announce that our Launch Edition will come equipped with a 42 kilowatt hour battery pack and a target of range of about 400 miles per charge. It'll also be the first electric vehicle to integrate the newly open North American charging standard, allowing for level two charging at a speed of about 57 miles per hour. For incre increased convenience, I should say, you can also charge the Launch Edition with a 120 volt outlet at about 13 miles per hour or about 150 miles overnight. And that's in addition to our solar charging capability up to 40 miles per day, whether you're parked or driving. We're proud to share the revolutionary capabilities of our Launch Edition vehicles. To tell you more about this design and its features, let's invite Aptera's Chief of Design, Jason Hill, to join us. Jason. Thanks, guys. Hi, everyone. What you've just seen is the culmination of Aptera's unwavering quest to synthesize engineering and design principles with desirable features into a product that allows for creative mobility driven by the sun. And I'm very pleased to be able to walk you all through our launch edition design details, features, and functions today. Without further ado, let's get into it. Aptera's interior, where you'll spend most of your time, was designed accordingly to create a user experience that is comfortable within the working environment of our ultra-efficient shape. Through ergonomic packaging and efficient use of reach envelopes, we're confident you'll find Aptera miraculously spacious. We've found ways to optimize interior cabin spaces, increasing head, leg, and hip room without compromising our efficiency. The Launch Edition seats two people comfortably. This builds on Aptera's already spacious storage area. Between the cargo space and the lower cargo bunk, the Launch Edition provides 32.5 cubic feet of secure storage. And since there is 6.2 feet between the seats and the rear cargo space, you can easily load up a bicycle, surfboard, or take a pit stop with Aptera's optional camping kit along your route. Designing a comfortable space also meant focus on, focusing on seating. The seats in Aptera are fully adjustable, moving forward and backward at an angle so that everyone can find their preferred seating position. 
Additionally, our steering yoke is also adjustable to further aid in your optimal comfort. Our seats are also made to be extremely safe, lightweight, and very strong, just like our vehicle. The launch edition will be produced with the Codex colorway using natural color finishes with warm and engaging undertones and accents of rose gold. To contrast the Luna exterior, to build a vehicle made to last, we thoughtfully chose interior materials that are durable, sustainable, safe, and easy to clean. We strive to be honest with our materials, allowing them to exist in their natural state whenever possible. With the goal of creating engaging and intuitive space for our users, to meet Aptera's innovation, our design decisions were informed by removing burdens in relation to its controls. The center display is your main interface for viewing and controlling most of Aptera's important functions, including vehicle controls, audio, media, navigation, and more. Aptera's infotainment system will also come equipped with a Bluetooth connectivity. It's, all, it's where all the aspects of climate control happen. Here, users can adjust airflow temperature ranging from 60 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and velocity to their precise liking. While we have most center controls using the center screen interface, some things, such as a hazard switch, remain as a manual button. Additionally, we have worked through secondary needs for things like manual door release and drive selection. The Launch Edition vehicle takes what we've learned from observing how drivers use their spaces inside their vehicles over the years and translate it into interior options and compartments that are both practical and intentional. Inside the cabin you'll find two sun visors, two USB-C charging points, and a document holder on the lower IP. The Launch Edition Center Council has a center armrest, two cup holders, and storage options for smaller items. To create an amazing audio experience for your solar-powered road trips, our enhanced audio package with five channels of audio comes included in every Launch Edition vehicle. This consists of two tweeters, two mid-range, and one subwoofer. The enhanced audio package brings great sound depth with accurate and deep bass response. Aptera has invested a lot of time in solving the equation for greater safety and visibility for the driver in an ultra-efficient vehicle. Two occupant airbags and body structures made from ultra-high strength carbon fiber sheet molding compound, CFSMC, combined with glass sheet molding compound, SMC, are designed for enhanced safety and strength. Our vehicle's platform's wide wheelbase and low center of gravity help, keeps you planted securely. To help improve safety further, the Launch Edition is equipped with our Vision Assist system and two ultrasonic proximity sensors. In Aptera, you'll benefit from a digital rear view display and two side view cameras with digital displays above the steering yoke for left and right side visibility. On the steering column, you'll find on the left stock that controls your left-right signal and your bright function. On the steering yoke itself, you'll find the plus minus for volume and on the left side and on the button to the, activate the horn on the right side. The Launch Edition features a sleek silver exterior or what we like to call Luna. Luna draws inspiration from infinite possibilities of the moon and the stars and it's a reminder that we can find worlds here within our own world. The silver color wrap portion of Aptera that you see amounts to only 35% of its body surface. We chose a film wrap because it's more environmentally friendly and eliminates approximately 98% the need for a traditional painting process while offering UV protection. The color of the body and the wheel pants will be Luna, which is most popular color selected by our pre-order reservation holders. The resulting wrapped area, interestingly, is mostly not exposed to direct sunlight which would therefore enhance the longevity of the surface finish. At Aptera, we believe our drive for efficiency lends itself to achieving a beautiful, minimal, and sleek design that is sustainable without compromise. We are very excited for everyone to experience the freedom that Aptera allows. Now let's bring Steve and Chris back to talk about production. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> as, we, as we enter a new phase of our path towards solar mobility, we're accompanied by key partners that are accelerating our progress towards production. One collaborator that can't be underestimated is CPC Group in Modena, Italy. Aptera has a true synergy with CPC. They not only possess decades of experience and passion in manufacturing, but they are pioneers in specialized carbon fiber materials structures. Their futuristic process makes manufacturing possible in a whole new way 
and it allows Aptera to begin delivering vehicles to customers more quickly. In fact, when Akos and Pablo first went there, they were so amazed at what they saw, and CPC wouldn't let them take pictures, <laughs> that they insisted that we come there and see it ourselves, so we were on a plane the next day. Yep. From <clears throat> For months now, CPC has been working side by side with our engineering team on design execution and production optimization. Once given the green light, they will stand up the Aptera production line in about nine months and produce finished vehicles ready for solar, battery, and interior within about 12 months. One of the most important aspects of CPC's process is our specialized composite body. We call it the bank body in carbon. And it takes much less time to make compared to traditional automotive structures. It's a very refined process that produces very little waste and yields parts that are easily recyclable into other products. This is only the beginning with our relationship with CPC and our plans to move solar mobility forward. After launching our production lines in Modena, Italy, CPC is partnering with Eptera to create production lines here in the U.S. This represents our vision for the future and scaling up manufacturing around the world. Now is an exciting moment for Aptera. The future is within our reach. We have what it takes to succeed. Efficiency in engineering, efficiency in production, and a revolutionary process to assemble our bank. As we move quickly into the new year, our engineers are finalizing the fourth and final phase of our development, Delta. As part of our Delta phase, we'll be completing crash testing and validation. The engineering team is excited to perform and publish these data using our Delta builds. And once crash testing and validation phase <clears throat> is complete, we'll be able to show you our physical launch edition vehicles and begin the first test drives. Test drives. We're in a race to get you your solar EVs as quickly as possible. But in order to get into the start of production, additional capital is required. To date, we've raised 85 million from 15,000 investors and we're extremely grateful for the contributions of our investors. With efficiency as our guiding light, Aptera has required far less capital to get to this stage of development far less than any other manufacturer of a vehicle of this type. And even though we're closer than ever to getting Aptera in production, we still need to raise about $50 million to reach the first gate of volume production of our launch edition vehicle. Once we reach this goal, we'll be able to secure manufacturing equipment, tools, molds, and parts to ramp production. To reach our goals, we've employed a three-pronged strategy. We're raising institutional capital, and we're working on non-dilutive funding through government loan and grant programs. And lastly, and most impactfully, through Aptera's crowdfunding campaigns. We allow anyone who wants to be involved with our solar mobility movement the chance to become an Aptera shareholder. Every dollar you invest is directly tied to our progress and accelerates the production of our launch edition vehicles so that we can get you behind the wheel of an Aptera as soon as possible. We're still offering the opportunity to invest in Aptera pre-IPO. Anyone can invest at invest.apterraus. And if you want to change your vehicle configuration to the launch edition you're seeing today, you can do so at aptera.us in your dashboard. We've made it easy for you to make the change. We hope you'll join us on our path to solar mobility, and we appreciate your willingness to invest in the future of our planet. We'll be hosting an exclusive webinar for our investors on Friday, January 27th at 10 a.m. More details will be sent directly to our investors in the coming days. So be sure and invest by February, Wednesday the 25th to get the chance to attend our exclusive investor webinar. Whether you've been following us since the beginning or you joined the solar mobility movement today, you are an important part of our mission to make solar mobility a reality for all. And as we close out this presentation, We'd like to open the floor to answer some live questions from the chat. Uh, first question was, why are you limiting the launch configuration? It's a very good, very good question. Um, all of our manufacturing partners from Sandy Monroe, CPC, everybody else 
says this variability uh, will kill a startup. Make one product, keep it simple. Keep the build material simple, the assembly line simple. Launch with one product, one configuration, any color you want as long as it's Luna. Correct. That's why. We, we've had the example of a lot of other electric vehicle companies and other startups that try to make multiple, multiple configurations, and that seems to be where everyone gets tripped up. So uh, build one vehicle, uh, homogenize you know, everything in the supply chain, and uh, build lots of them. Uh, how many launch vehicles do you anticipate building in this configuration? Um, we anticipate building about 5,000 in this launch configuration. Uh, but if we get overwhelming support uh, for this configuration, we may expand that number. Uh, what kind of customizations will be made available with this launch edition? It's accessory. Accessory-wise? Yeah. Well, yeah. There's no customization, right? There's no it's just customization. accessories later after. Correct. We will have some uh, really good accessories available at launch. Um, I think everyone will be surprised. You might have seen one little preview um, that talks about the freedom to go and stay anywhere you want. Um, otherwise, we're going we're gonna to have, over the months, we're going to release exactly what those accessories will be. I think working with the aftermarket suppliers that can make very cool accessories for Aptera will be the mission. Uh, enable those people with data and information and CAD or whatever they need to, to make really cool uh, things to make Aptera owners' uh, you know, yeah. life more enjoyable. We've had some fabulous conversations with uh, existing brands that you might know who have uh, approached us or we've approached them and, and we're going to be able to offer a variety of those, of the, of those items. Uh, if I do not order the launch edition, when can I expect my vehicle to be delivered? Mm -hmm. uh, well, as we said, if we build over 5,000 of these launch edition vehicles um, and we get into production by the end of this year or 2024, um, you know, we'll have to build 5,000 of those launch edition vehicles. So you will be after uh, that. Um, and obviously, we want to build the 400 mile range first. Uh, then we want to go to the 250 mile range, then the 600 mile range, and the 1,000 mile range last. Uh, so you would be delivered in that order. So if you want your vehicle the soonest, it's the 400 mile range. If you want it the second soonest, 250, 600, and then 1,000. Um, what is, how can I reconfigure my vehicle to the launch edition? Um, the marketing team has done a great job with our web developers to uh, really make it easy uh, in your Aptera dashboard to just click one button uh, to change uh, over to the launch edition vehicle. So uh, if you want to change over to the launch edition, please uh, go to your Aptera dashboard at aptera.us, click the big green button uh, to change to the launch edition and uh, save that to your uh, vehicle configuration. There's a question about Paradigm. Uh, what about Paradigm reservation holders? Uh, pa our Paradigm orders were the very first orders that we took. Um, you know, I remember that first uh, launch day and we were like, you know, if we got a thousand orders for the Aptera, we could really make this a company. <laughs> um, and uh, we had that in a weekend. Um, so then it was like, well, 4,000. Now we have, you know, some economies of scale. And now we're over 40,000 orders for the Aptera. Uh, but the Paradigm people were the first people to support us. And we look forward to delivering a very special Paradigm edition to you. No matter where you are in the configuration shuffle and no matter when we deliver your vehicle, if you ordered a Paradigm edition, you will get a very special delivery. Um, why is the battery pack one kilowatt hour bigger now, Steve? Than 41. Well, basically volumetric efficiency, you know, able to shrink the space uh, and fit more cells in. So we want to put as much as we can in that package. I would say this is an example of a lot of the different work we've done with the supply chain to really work with the suppliers of the parts we will put into the vehicle, including Eve Energy with battery cells. And then you have to go through testing and validation of those systems to kind of finally come up with the you know, actual capacity of our battery pack. Um, so that's true of a lot of different uh, systems in the vehicle. Um, what, uh, what about the grant work uh, you've been doing um, and how will that impact your growth? Uh, we've been um, uh, had an amazing group that has worked on uh, grants for us, and we've uh, we've gotten uh, a significant one uh, here in California, and we think that that will really help accelerate our path to production. And we'll talk more about that specifically and how it impacts our path to production in our investor seminar on uh, next Friday. And just real quick, that grant was a competition between Aptera and many other companies, so it wasn't. Uh, the state of California is doling out checks. It was a very healthy competition with lots of due diligence from the state. Yeah, it's very, very humbling to, uh, to be um, you know, in a line with uh, many, many compelling tech companies and uh, have you know, our business plan uh, validated like that. Uh, will you have larger vehicles produced later down the line with more seats? 
Um, you know, we're, we're focused on the three-wheel vehicle. Uh, this three-wheel platform can be extended to a lot of different configurations. One in the future, way in the future, uh, maybe one with more seats. But right now, you know, we have our hands full uh, with just producing our three-wheel vehicle. Chris, that's exactly right. And, and we, you know, we've got to be able to deliver on the execution and the process of the, of the launch edition, the, the Aptera. Um, we also know how to apply this technology and this methodology to other vehicle types. That is for sure. And, and this does scale. The, the carbon fiber process, the solar, the efficiency, the aerodynamics, all of this scales into other types of vehicles. Yes. Questions here for us. Uh, once we're in uh, production with this vehicle, you know, our drive package, our battery packs, our display systems, uh, everything about our vehicle architecture is extensible to a lot of different areas. Um, um, why no fast charging other than level two? Um, well, the, uh, the, the, the big reason is we don't think a lot of people will, will need super, super fast charging for a vehicle like this that's charged by the sun. Uh, but it also adds a lot of uh, complexity to the vehicle to add super fast charging, including uh, the robustness uh, of the battery pack and how much energy you can shove into it uh, very, very quickly. Uh, but, but we think uh, level two charging is, is, is plenty for you know, the vast majority of up driving. From an efficiency standpoint, uh, our complexity in the thermal management goes up significantly to facilitate level three charging. Uh, it can be something that we do in the future. In fact, we, we've demonstrated it here at the bench level um, and our decision not to put it in the launch product was again, you know, paring down what the launch product is and trying to keep it as simple and functional as possible while offering the opportunity in the future to bring in some of these features. Uh, what will the launch edition vehicle cost? Um, it's, uh, it's an effort with our supply chain uh, to launch the vehicle in uh, the most um, you know, economical fashion possible. Uh, but until we have, um, you know, our funding squared away and a real path to production and we finalize the supply agreements for a lot of these parts, we aren't gonna know the final pricing. Um, obviously, everyone's seen price increases across the board in, in almost everything um, that we buy today. And uh, we've seen, you know, electric vehicle prices go up 25, 30%, 40% in some cases, uh, depending on, you know, what vehicle uh, you're looking at. Uh, but, you know, certainly from when we started this effort two and a half years ago, uh, prices have gone up on a lot of the things we are putting into this launch vehicle. Uh, but we won't know an actual price until we've locked down everything in the supply chain to, uh, to let you guys know that. Uh, what's the next milestone for production? Um, you know, I, I would say there's, uh, there's, there's mostly our funding efforts uh, to be able to buy the tooling and equipment we need to fill this factory. Pablo and his team have done an amazing job at getting, and we'll discuss this more uh, next Friday in our investor webinar, but getting all the equipment and tooling quoted uh, to fill this factory and produce 20,000 vehicles a year, uh, along with the vast majority of the parts that it takes to actually build a vehicle. I think we're 87% or, or something like that of the value. Um, but, you know, we, uh, um, we really have to get that funding taken care of, and then start ordering that equipment. From the time we start to write checks uh, for that equipment, Pablo's team says in about nine months, the, uh, the facility will be operational, we'll be building vehicles. So that's, that's kind of the sequence of events. For me personally, I think when we start cutting those big steel blocks into tools and uh, at CPC, I think that'll be a big milestone because we had to order those steel blocks about six months ago. And there. so we've, we spent a lot of money a long yeah. time ago just to make sure we got in the production queue for the tooling steel now we have the steel that's arrived in Italy. Uh, once the data is finalized and gone through a final design review and release, and we start cutting those tools for the composite parts, I think for me that'll be one of the biggest milestones. Yeah, we have a lot of things that are that are ready for production or you know stepping towards production already. So, um. for, for sure, the product design is essentially done. Um, it is essentially pencils down. There's some fungibility and flexibility in some of the smaller details, um, especially as it relates to uh, minor things like. Uh, uh, some of the lighting validation, um, but these are all achievable. And but we have now the product that is ready to be produced, and we have the method of how it gets to produce and how it gets produced, and we have the partnerships that that have been established and the production methodology. We are ready to go. Uh, what's the what's the process for crash crash testing and validation? It's it's a multi-step process. Uh, the the first part is that we've been simulating crash testing already uh, with our partner CPC and Modena and uh, some of the other vendors. 
the materials that we're using, this material, for example, and the aluminum is in the structural battery pack in the subframe, they're all very well understood from a material science perspective and able to be modeled and simulated for roof, roof crush, door crush, frontal impact, offset impact, etc. But the final crash testing plan is actually dictated by the airbag manufacturer. So they have a specific series of tests that they will do to validate the airbag, the driver and passenger airbag in our vehicle. Um, validation, uh, it, there's a very lengthy validation plan uh, written out on a, on a project, a Gantt chart uh, that Ahmed has, and it's not something that we could go into on this uh, webinar, but uh, there's a very detailed and robust plan. Um, I'd say it's worth noting that it's um, really the compute power that we have available to us that has made simulation so easy and a lot of what we do possible. Uh, the aerodynamics that we've achieved is because computational fluid dynamics and the compute power that we were able to apply, you know, buying, <laughs> buying time on Amazon web servers to, um, to process computational fluid dynamics, get great results, and it's results that we can trust. We had our suspension uh, simulated and then we took it out for weeks of testing on the track with very expensive sensors um, and such. And we had 95% correlation, what happened in the real world and our simulation. Um, so when it comes to simulating uh, crash and crush and those things, uh, we know that we're gonna get really good results and it's really the power of uh, you know, the computational tools that we have now that, that make it all possible. That's a really good point. So we can uh, simulate the curb strike and then we can go out to the track, the test track out at some particular OEM's uh, facility <laughs> in the desert and do an actual curb strike, and the modeling mimics real life with very high concordance, you know, over 95%, so that's a, that's a big milestone for us. Um, what about deliveries in Europe? Um, we want to be a, a global brand, and we want to bring solar mobility to everyone that wants it. Uh, you know, Europe has some uh, specific homologation needs, uh, which we will have to sort through over time. But shipping a small amount of vehicles almost anywhere in the world is, is relatively easy. Uh, most countries have exemptions for some uh, certain amount of vehicles. But as we scale past this launch uh, addition of 5,000 vehicles um, and look to be um, in Europe uh, and beyond, uh, we'll have to go through homologation there um, and around the world to you know, get thousands of vehicles to, uh, to Europe and Australia and uh, parts of Asia. And uh, we want to be there as soon as possible. Um, I think a great benefit to us as a right to repair company is that we can ship vehicles uh, to far flung places where you may not be very close to um, our, our, our support team, our mobile uh, van service to come out and help you with any problem you may have with the Aptera, uh, but we'll give you the information on how to fix anything in your Aptera and ship you the parts within 24 hours of a request so you can take it to a local mechanic um, or somebody that can do the work for you or do the work yourself. Uh, that means if you're in the middle of Australia and you got lots of sun, you would love solar mobility, but you're nowhere near any uh, Aptera service center or mobile service, uh, you can still feel confident that you can buy the Aptera and use it for, for a lifetime and, and be happy with it. And at the moment, service is basically going to be handled through our distribution, our regional distribution centers as we expand out of California, but there are other partners that we're talking to that may be able to help us on a national, even global scale. Uh, who will repair the vehicles if needed? I think Steve kind of just answered that question. Uh, we'll, we'll look for, for partners and, and, and maybe our mobile service, uh, but it's pretty easy in uh, population dense areas. Uh, you know, if you look at the uh, population density map of the U.S., that's pretty much where our orders are. So, you know, if you're in Southern California or Northern California or um, Atlanta or New York, you're probably in an area where there's lots of other Aptera owners, so it'll be easy to provide service in those areas. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to do that uh, very effectively, maybe with a third party uh, as well. Uh, is autonomous driving on the roadmap? Uh, yes, not, well, I should say level two at least. Uh, we've demonstrated level two in one of our development vehicles over there uh, with the partner that we're working with. Uh, we're also testing this system in our personal vehicles just to uh, gain confidence uh, in addition to our own testing and validation. Um, will it be in the launch product? Probably not, but we're trying to, but definitely level two is in our future. Um, are you planning to go public? Um, yes. Uh, we would love to tie an IPO to our launch or production. Um, and you know, as we begin to uh, finalize our, our funding path to production um, and we actually get there, we'll be you know, uh, structuring hopefully a public offering in, in, in the next year or so as we get uh, closer to production. I think it's a, it's a, 
it's a great path for us that gives us a lot of leverage as we grow to uh, make sure we can build the eight plants, uh, eight assembly plants we have planned uh, by 2028. That's uh, it from us. Thank you very much for joining us. And um, we are glad that you joined us this morning and uh, hope that we answered your questions and gave you some new information that you didn't have before. Uh, th thank you, Sarah, and the marketing team for putting all this together. Uh, hopefully it was an amazing uh, webinar for everyone. And uh, make sure to put on your calendars, if you're an investor, uh, the 27th event. Uh, and if you want to be invited to that event, make sure you've invested uh, in Aptera by the 25th, uh, Wednesday of next week, so we can get that notification out to you. It's amazing and humbling to have all your support. Um, it's uh, awesome to have such an amazing team uh, to put the vehicle together. And, um, you know, what we've created, uh, we think will make the world a better place. Thank you, everyone.